veteran actors Pete Edoche and Kanayo O Kanayo battle over seniority in Nollywood. This started when Pete Edoche shared more insight into his acting career and how he created history in the entertainment industry in Nigeria. According to Peter Doche during an interview with Afia TV, the movie veteran explained that he was older than Nigeria's movie industry known as Nollywood. In the interview, Peter Doche noted that nothing like Nollywood existed when he started acting and starred in his first movie in 1985 titled Things Fall Apart. According to him, Nollywood movie industry was still in the womb with no atom of sign of being birthed even seven years after he acted his first movie. Peter Doche revealed how his first movie, Things Fall Apart, boosted the Nigerian movie industry and made him celebrated as an actor all over the world. He recounted how he traveled worldwide and even the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, flew into Nigeria to interview him, which is something that is uncommon for Nigerian celebrities at the time. Only important political figures like presidents get such treatments from BBC at the time. Peter Doche stated that BBC also flew out of Nigeria immediately after his interview with them to the United States of America to interview Chinua Achebe, who was the author of the book Things Fall Apart, where Pete Idoche acted. According to Peter Doche, he said that Chinua Achebe was so pleased with the way he portrayed Okonkwo's character in the movie to the point that Chinua Achebe said in an interview with the British Broadcasting Corporation that Peter Doche gave the role an interpretation after his heart. Aside from saying that in an interview, Peter Doche said that Chinua Achebe also made the same statement to him in person when they met. Peter Doche then concluded by saying that seven years after he acted things fall apart Nollywood came and when he retired from broadcasting he joined Nollywood I am senior to the movie industry I mean when I did things fall apart in 1985 there was nothing like Nollywood by then Nollywood there's an expression my actor always uses Nollywood was slumbering sonorously in the womb of time <laughs> and it was seven years after that Nollywood came on board with um, living in bondage yeah I went around the world before Nollywood came. By the special grace of God, after I did things fall apart, I was celebrated internationally. The BBC flew in here to interview me, then flew into America to interview Chibu Achebe, and Achebe said, Dr. Edochie gave that role an interpretation after my heart. Unquote. When he died, he was calling me a Okonkwo. Seven years after, Nollywood came, and when I retired from broadcasting, I joined Nollywood. However, this statement didn't go down well with veteran Nollywood actor Kanayo O Kanayo, who is known as one of the few veterans that featured in the first Nollywood movie ever made. To clear the public about the misconception created by Peter Doche in the quest to boost his achievement in the industry, Kanayo O Kanayo made a bold claim about his seniority over his veteran colleague Pete Edoche in Nollywood. In an interview with Afia TV, the popularly called Nine Sacrifice, while speaking on the history of the Nollywood movie industry, shared the groundbreaking achievement legendary filmmaker Kenneth Nibwe made with his project Living in Bondage which happens to be the first Nollywood movie. He added that Nibwe was the first filmmaker to produce home videos in 1992 on a professional level. Kanayo stated that people like himself and his colleagues who acted in the hit movie Living in Bondage in 1992-1993 were among the pioneers of Nollywood as true professionals before anyone else. He stressed that the 1985 movie Things Fall Apart featuring Peter Doche was a cinema project and not a home video production that Nollywood is known for. Kanayo O Kanayo added that Peter Doche can boast of being part of the pioneers of cinema movies in Nigeria but shouldn't talk about Nollywood because Peter Doche joined Nollywood four years after him which makes him a senior. To Pete Edoche in the Nollywood movie industry. The thespian stressed that he was ready to challenge anyone who claimed Pete Edoche preceded him in starting Nollywood. Some of us cannot be written out of the history when it's told or the story when it's told of uh, Nollywood. You can't take it away that Kenneth Nebwe Neck Video Links made the first professionally produced home video. You can't take it away 1992. You can't take it away for all of those who took part in the uh, that 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 uh, living in bondage, just like you can't take it away from the fact that Tensile Apart, which Peter Doche took part in, was not home video, was cinema. So, if you write a story now and say Peter Doche is older than me in the Nollywood, I'll contest it because he came four years after. It's not it's not a it wasn't a matter of biological age. So in Nollywood, I'm a senior. But if you, know, you call bring cinema, of course, then you start going to Baba, 
Kuba to Gunde in 1940 something or 1950 something. This is history. History has no romanticism. No one bears the brunt of Nollywood's typecast problem quite like Kanayo Okanayo, an actor who cut his teeth playing iconic ritualist roles in a series of classic occult films starting in the 1990s. He made his ritualist debut in Nollywood's first blockbuster, Success, 1992's Living in Bondage, playing Chief Omegu, a mega-rich motor spare parts dealer who sacrifices his mother for wealth. The film's mainstream success and the actor's magnetic performance in a supporting role launched a trend of ritualist films that populated the market in the 1990s and much of the 2000s. Kanayo Okanayo went on to play Gabriel, who unintentionally sacrifices his son for wealth in executive billionaires, Edward, who sacrifices two sons and blocks his wife's womb, and the Diamond Street, Amobi, who, as a 30-year-old man, pledges to an occult group to die at the age of 42 in exchange for wealth in Nothing for Nothing, and Norbert, who sacrifices his father, twin sister, and wife to enjoy 10 maximum years of wealth. In standing order, thou shalt be rich. The actor was prolific with his ritualist roles and quickly became the face of Nollywood's potent era of ritual films, but he wasn't alone. Claire Mohameze was quite prolific with the ritualist roles too and often co-starred with Kanayo Okanayo, including in Nothing for Nothing and Standing Gorda, Thou Shall Be Reach. To some degree, other actors like Enebe Lee Eneboa, Zach Oji, Prince Emekani, Alex Osifo, Bob Mano Udoku, and AGK Asiebub developed quite a reputation for ritualist roles. But none of Kanayo Okanayo's peers has retained the shine quite like he has decades later and now he is the Nigerian pop culture avatar of the ritualist. By the mid-2000s, he already had street recognition as the actor to beat when playing characters who would do anything to live a life of wealth no matter the cost, father, mother, children, friends or enemies. He wore his character's evils on his sleeves and delivered on many of these roles with smooth execution. This reputation was enhanced by the public's fascination with the activities of people exposed for supposed ritual crimes in real life. Life imitating art made the most prominent fictional ritualist character played by actors like Kanayo Okanayo larger than life. The Nigerian public's obsession with wealth also made his characters somewhat attractive and desirable no matter how terrible their stories ended. The gradual mainstream deaths of ritual films in the 2010s tempered some of the attention, but the internet gradually bloomed in the same period and meme culture started to take root. When the nostalgia for classic Nollywood films started to reach a fever pitch around the mid-2010s, Kanayo Kanayo's ritual profile started to build again, but the real pop culture explosion didn't happen until he reprised his role as Chief Omego in the Living in Bondage sequel released in 2019. The new generation of the internet saw him in action and the rest of it has been history. The actor regularly features in conversations about fictional and real-life ritual murder and just like recently even dominates trends as a source of comic relief. Some of these conversations happen in comment sections of his social media account where he isn't allowed to say ritual buzzwords like sacrifice or fraternize in completely innocent context without being assaulted with countless jokes about ritual murder. With a growing resurgence, the actor has earned himself a social media moniker and is regularly addressed as Nai Sacrifice or Father of Sacrifice. Since the internet is built to go overboard with everything compulsive, Kanayo Kanayo's display of his wealth has filled jokes that he must be a ritualist off-screen, a narrative the actor has pushed back against online. When he shared a photo of himself at the 100th birthday party of Ezinne Anyao, a colleague's mother in 2021, a follower commented that he was surprised the actor had not sacrificed the celebrants for blood money. In response, Kanayo Kanayo said that it's most unfortunate that even when one plays certain roles, some youths cannot distinguish between one and the character. Just because one acted as a criminal on TV, some people see the actor as a criminal. Meanwhile, an actor has to be flexible. Acting as a ritualist does not mean one is a ritualist in real life. Anyways, he says he sees those who think that way as uneducated, uninformed and having complex problems. He says that we need to redefine the word youth in Nigeria. Being a youth does not mean one has to be irresponsible. He's made similar statements of rebuke over the years and reinforced the point that he doesn't sacrifice people for money when the camera goes off. The 61-year-old would prefer he is equally acknowledged for the non-ritualist role he has played in his successful career, including as recently as 
in Lionheart, Professor John Bowen, and up north. But even if this acknowledgement remains elusive, he hasn't allowed himself to become too bothered by the ritualist reputation. And because it's impossible to beat the internet, he has also played into the joke of on numerous occasions as long as it's all good natured. It's been 31 years since Kanayo Kanayo first played Chief Omego, and the ripple effect of that role on his career has created an unshakable reputation and has become social media's favorite punchline. How much of it is harmless fun? How much ruins the actor's day and where the line should be drawn will remain impossible to measure. Anayo Modestus Onyekwere, popularly known as Kanayo Okanayo, is a Nigerian veteran actor born March 1, 1962 in Mbese, Imo State, Nigeria. He made his debut in Nollywood in 1992 in his role in Living in Bondage. In 2006, he won the African Movie Academy Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role. He was raised in Aba Abia State and attended St. Joseph Primary School. He had his secondary education at Secondary Technical School, Aba. He obtained a diploma in mass communication, a diploma in law, and a graduate degree in philosophy from the University of Lagos. He also obtained a master's degree in political sciences. He also obtained a law degree from the University of Abuja in 2018 and was called to bar in 2020. Kanayo O. Kanayo started his acting career in 1982, acting in productions by the Nigerian Television Authority. He made his debut movie appearance in the year 1992 in the film Living in Bondage. He has starred in over 100 films and was nominated in 2008 for Africa Movie Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in the movie Across the Niger. His most recent movies are Up North and Living in Bondage Breaking Free. In 2011, he contested for the chair of Imo State House of Representatives but lost. In 2018, he contested for the representatives of Ahiaz Ezinihite Mbise in the Federal House of Representatives under the political party Abga, but lost. He has featured in multiple Nollywood productions including Lionheart, the sitcom Professor John Boo. However, he is known for playing the role of a villain in these productions, especially in films relating to occultic practices. He has received the order of the MFR. In 2022, Kanayo is estimated to be worth $10.5 million as he is a businessman and has backed various endorsement deals during his career. As the two legends clash, it's a reminder of the incredible journey Nollywood has traveled from its early days to the present. The industry has grown, evolved and created stars like Peter Doji and Kanayo O Kanayo each with their own unique impact. Whether you are Team Pete or Team Kanayo, there is no denying that both actors have left an indelible mark on Nollywood. The debate over seniority will continue, but what truly matters is the enduring legacy of Nigerian cinema, which is richer for having both of them. As Nollywood continues to shine on the global stage, it's worth celebrating the contributions of all its veterans and the vibrant new talents emerging every day. The story of Nollywood is far from over, and with every film, every role, and every debate, it continues to captivate audiences around the world. Thank you for joining us in this journey through Nollywood's rich history and its enduring legends.